Okay, so this is my jar. It doesn't look great, does it? Oh, that's the starter in it. So, it's uh, 615, 616. So I got the jar, I got my scale zeroed. I got the water. About 35. Yeah, 35. So we got about 100 grams of water and 100 grams of spare white flour. Okay, because I'm making a double recipe, I'm gonna go to 100. <coughs> it goes pretty fast. Mm, be careful. So I'm gonna go a little more than 100 because I want to make a little bit of extra starter. I'm going to go like 105, let's say 104. Okay, now we'll do the same with the flour. Okay, so I zeroed the scale. I'm using a spoon. Okay, so that's our next. Okay, that. And uh, I put the rubber band. Okay, so I'm just going to put this in here. And I'm going to turn the light on. So now the temperature will get about 28, 29 degrees in there. And by lunchtime, we'll be ready to make bread. Okay, so... Oh, okay, it's 11.50. So what is it, like five hours later? That's what the starter looks like. Looks awesome. Look at all those nice bubbles. Okay, so I got some water here, 600, no, 25 degree Celsius water. I'm gonna put 620 grams of water. Keeping in mind, I'm making two loaves here. I'll go with 619. Alright. I'm gonna reset the reset the scale. Okay, I need both hands here so you get to see Charlotte too when I'm doing this. <laughs> okay, so now I'm gonna put 200 grams of starter. And it's really weird looking. But it's good. And it's actually floating. I don't know. So the floating people will be happy. So I want to put 200 grams. It's usually most of the bottle, but of course I'm making a little more this time. So I don't want to put too much. 162, 180. Six. There you go. Two hundred. 
But this is what's left in the uh, in the jar. So what I do is I kind of push it down to the bottom. And when I'm done uh, mixing the bread, then I'll uh, I'll put some of this in a different jar for you guys. And then I whisk and mix the starter and the um, and the water. I'm gonna break it all up nicely. And I'm gonna add 16 grams of salt. I use sea salt. Don't know if it matters. We like sea salt here. So 16 grams of this. Hmm. Think I'm running out of sea salt. Zero to scale again. Okay, scale is zero. Now I'll go with the flour. So this uh, organic uh, stuff from, uh, from from Spearville. So this is not very scientific. Basically, use my uh, cup, my one cup measure, and then I kind of do two scoops of the whole wheat. But I'm not really measuring. That gives me about 300 grams ish, and then I kind of finish with the white. So, keeping an eye. So, I want to go, the recipe calls for 900. So I find uh, my dough's a little bit kind of on the west side, so I go, I don't know if it makes a difference or not, but I go 910-ish. Okay, now I use my scraper. And I mix. I'm trying not to make a mess, but try is the key word. This is all boring, I should be telling jokes. Any good jokes? I don't know what would be more boring. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I kind of suck at jokes. I can't tend to screw up the punchlines. Uh, okay, so. So we're not trying to get the bread looking like a like it's ready, ready, like a nice loafy thing, but we just basically mix it. So that all the ingredients are mixed together. And uh, it's gonna look something like this. Well, that's the mixing or auto leaves. Okay, so a couple more things here. So I have my little Andy Dandy water, you know, dollar store water bottle. So I spray like whatever, five to six times. 
the water just so it doesn't dry out. And then I cover with my dish cloth. Yes. And then just stick it back in the oven with the light on. And I come back in 30 minutes. Okay, it's been 30 minutes. So I just took this out of the oven with just the light on. And now I take my water bottle again and I spray the table nice and wet. And that's to prevent sticking. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put this down. Okay. So, now the fun part. Stretch and fold. So you take your dough. And you dump them on the table. You try to get all the bits and pieces. Then they stick to the wall. Like so. Yeah. Now, with my hands, I think I'll just use one hand so I can hold the camera. So then you stretch and fold. Yep. Okay, I have to switch the camera. So my hand's nice and wet. So I just grab the dough, stretch it, and fold it. Stretch, fold, stretch, fold. So four, five, six. Seven, eight. I'm already feeling it's getting more structure. So nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And then I kind of make it into a ball, like so. Okay, so I make it into a ball, and then I put it back in the bowl, and usually I kind of scrape the stuff off the table, and put that in there too. And I put my scraper in the bowl, with the dough, and then I rinse my hands. Spray with more water. Yeah, about five or six times. Put the cover back on. And then back in the oven with the light on for 90 minutes this time. Okay, so it's been an hour and a half. And the bread has spread out a bit. And grown a little bit. So now I'm going to do the stretch and fold like I did before. And... Uh, so I'm going to switch the camera. Okay, so again, we're going to spray the table. It prevents it from sticking. I don't know if it's said that already. I'm going to spray this thing. Okay. This looks much different than before. So this time they won't need as many stretch and folds. Oh, no. oh, yeah. Yeah, baby. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. It's getting stronger. You can feel it getting stronger. So eight is enough. You don't want to overdo this. 
I'm gonna put in a nice ball again. And back in the wall. And then so I like to rinse my hands so I don't get the bottle full of uh, goo. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so good. Okay. So that was the second stretch and fold. Now we're gonna go now for, so I'm gonna, instead of putting it in the oven, I'm gonna leave it on the counter and I'm gonna leave it for two hours instead of uh, 90 minutes. Okay, so, now we're getting ready to do the third stretch and fold. You probably can't really tell the video on here but it actually got quite a bit bigger again so now I'll basically do the same thing I did before with the stretch and folds until I feel the tension would be probably six or eight uh, stretch and folds and then back in the bowl again but this time it will only be for 45 minutes or for an hour if I decided just to leave it on the counter instead of two <clears throat> okay, so after the third session fold, then you're ready for the pre-shake. So what we do is we uh, flower our work area. Okay. And once again, we dump the goo on the table. Okay, so now because I made two loaves, this is when I split the loaves. So I don't have a great eye, so this is not my favorite thing to do. So what I do is I use the scale, so each loaf should be about 870-ish, 872-ish. Brands. So I try to kind of and cut it, and then what I do is I put it back in the bowl on the scale. Eight thirty-eight. Then I just keep kind of adding until the what did I say? Eight seventy. Okay, that's about. 870-ish. So, and now, you don't do the stretch and fold here. So what we do is uh, kind of flower my hands. So I just kind of pull, kind of use the scraper to kind of get it underneath the dough. Then I just kind of work it back like this, just a little bit. Just kind of and like if you're making like an apple uh, dumpling or whatever they're called. we are just kind of make it into a ball, kind of be gentle with it. And then, I should get a nice area flowered. So I'm gonna flip the thing over. Very sticky. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this. Then I kind of get underneath. Okay, let me uh, change the camera here. You can see what I'm doing. So I put some flour around the loaf. And then I kind of just gently push this from a, a ball. I'll up a little bit if you kind of go around a little bit of a circle. Okay. 
Ini enggak. And I'll do the same thing with the other one. Okay, so my two loaves are uh, pre-shaped. But this guy's got a little bit of a knobby here. They start to spread quite quickly. So anyway, so then I uh, cover them. No water this time. I just cover them with the uh, with the cloth, the dishcloth. Even a nice mess I'm making. Not great. Anyway, and you let that sit for an hour, just like this, and it's so called a pre-shape. Okay. Okay. Final step. Not my favorite. Find that a little bit challenging. So I have to make the loaf a little bit bigger, but to be gentle. Because you don't want to break down the structure too much. I really can't use my fingers, but no, no, it's not sticky. So I'll make it. What's the size of a regular pita bread or something like that? Okay, now here's the tricky part. So I'll grab an edge and I bring it to the center like this. And do the same thing on the other side. You can stretch it a bit and bring it on top. And I'm going to grab one end. It looks like a burrito now, and I'm just going to roll it on itself like this. It is super sticky. And then I put more flour around. And I sort of tuck it in, but I try don't go too much round, like, like straight in. Like that until it's like that. And it sticks too much, and it's out of the flour. And then I had my my Benetton basket. I have some uh, cotton liners in it, and I already floured it. And now it's just gonna. Scoop it underneath and then dump it upside down. I put more flour. Then I kind of, ah, I hit him when that happens. And the cotton shrinks a little bit. Ah, anyway, so I kind of press it down. I'll fix the thing after. Not too much, just to try to give it a little shape. I kind of hope for the best. <sighs> Doesn't really matter. And then I'll do the same thing with the other one. Uh, so the second one turned out a little better. But it'll be fine. It's just going to be a little weird. But at this point, you don't want to mess with it. Because you can see the still structure when you're pressing on it. It's uh, kind of bounces on the edges. Just can't really tell. Anyway, so now this is going in the fridge. And then uh, I'm going to bake it tomorrow morning. Okay. <coughs> so, this is the morning. I get the oven preheated. So now I get this uh, knife with a razor blade. And I'm gonna score the bread. So I'm going on about like quarter of an inch, -ish, quarter of an inch ish. My blade's getting a little dull here. Let's zoom in a bit. Let's zoom in. Stone preheated, so I'm gonna 
take the stone out and put it on top of the stove and then put the bread on it. So to put a bit of space between them and then I already boiled this kettle. I pour a bunch of water in this. Okay, 475 for 15 minutes. Oops, okay. So after 15 minutes, you're looking all right. So I just uh, turned on the oven to 4.35 and I set the timer to for uh, 20, 25, 20, 21. Okay, so my timer went off. I already checked it after 21 minutes and it wasn't ready, so put it back in. It must be in 20, oof, hot in there. 25 minutes. <sighs> Fun is all steamy now. <laughs> okay, and of course, I switched my uh, my thermometer to Fahrenheit because <clears throat> that's what we do in Canada. We use two systems. Oh okay. yeah. So I look for over two hundred. Oh, I can't see right now. To 200. How am I doing? Putting it on for another two, min two minutes or so. Looks good though. <coughs> there, two more minutes. Okay, so now this is about 25 minutes now at uh, 370, uh, 435. Uh, yeah, there we go. I like that. And plus, it looks a little nicer. It's got a nicer color. It looked a little pale before, after uh, 20 minutes, 21 minutes. Okay, we'll get the other one out. Okay, here's your little brother. No, I'm not going to bother taking the temperature on this one. Huh. Anyway, so put those in the cooling rack, and then of course they keep cooking for a bit. So usually I don't touch them until, uh, well, you know, for a few hours, three or four hours. And uh, I put my uh, my proofing cloth, this cloth, put it back on there. Some people don't, to like, like a crustier, a little harder crust. I like the softer. Not soft, but you know. Anyway, we're done.